You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thanks so much for joining me here today on this Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where I want to go over a topic that does not get the due that it deserves, and that is mold toxicity. Right now, we have statistics showing that out of all the people out there that are sick, and I'm going to give you all the symptoms, about 50% of those people, half of those people could have potential mold contamination. They could be living with mold spores growing inside of their body, causing all sorts of symptoms. Then if we look at all the packaged food out there right now, and it can include a lot of healthier grains or nuts or legumes or beans, and that at least 20% of those, at least two out of 10 bags essentially, are contaminated with aflatoxins or mycotoxins, this can lead to a real health-based epidemic. And the problem is that a lot of symptoms of mold toxicity look like other issues caused by more popular disease-based names out there. I want to do today is give mold toxicity and just mold in general the due that it deserves, really. I mean, is to talk about it, make it its own topic. Yes, I've answered it on the weekend Cabral house calls, but what I want to do is give its own show, talk about all the different symptoms you could be experiencing, and potentially you or your practitioner is overlooking the potential for mold. So let's go over that now. I like to start really right from the beginning. And that's because a lot of people's symptoms of mold toxicity go undiagnosed because they look like allergies or they look like other leaky gut-based issues, right? They look like intestinal permeability-based issues. So what do they look like? Well, they essentially look like allergic rhinitis. And if you don't know what rhinitis is, if you've never been told that before, it essentially means a runny nose. It almost looks like post-nasal drip all the time. Sneezing, coughing, persistent cough just through all the different seasons. Uh, specifically getting worse a lot of times though during the damp season as well. Moldy-based season, of course. Watery eyes, so like people's eyes that tear up unexpectedly. Really, really big sign of mold potential toxicity. Dry, scaly skin. Detox-based issues. Skin rashes. Again, anything that might look like an allergy can absolutely have mold as its allergy, as its sensitivity. So you might say, oh, well, I typically have the ragweed and grass and mold and pollen. Well, I put mold right in there, but mold is one of the big ones. And I didn't really know about this myself. Now, I've been understanding and looking at mold for quite some time, but that's because like a lot of health practitioners that get into this, you know, I had to deal with this when I was younger. So I would go for food allergy testing. Food sensitivity testing is, is a more true word for what it is since it's a sensitivity to the food, not necessarily an anaphylactic-based shock symptom. So what I went in was I had all of the environmental allergies tested on my arm, and then I did food sensitivities through blood work. Well, when they did all my food sensitivity, I mean, sorry, my environmental allergies, yes, the grass absolutely showed up, the dust showed up, the pollen showed up, like a lot of other people. But mold didn't show up. Here's the interesting thing. I went home, everything was fine. The next day, my arm blew up like literally blew up because they, for those of you who've never had environmental based allergies, a lot of times what they do is a skin based test. Well, they basically prick your arm and they go down the side of your arm and they do about, let's say three rows of 10 or five rows of 10, whatever it might be. And they just open up the skin just a little bit with a little bit of a skin prick using a lancet or obviously a sterile needle. And they put a dosage of whatever the environmental sensitivity may be, such as the pollen, the grass, the mold. Well, my mold looked fine within the hour, two hours after testing. But the next day when I went home, my arm literally blew up and it was all of the mold. So you can see that's a delayed sensitivity. That's more of that IgG-based sensitivity that a lot of people have. So you get the exposure, but it doesn't necessarily just lead to all of these crazy allergies. It leads to the chronic expression of mold exposure or mold buildup in your system. So I had all this mold buildup in my system. Little did they know that I had candida overgrowth, that I had all sorts of yeast-based overgrowth, and yeast in itself a form of mold or fungus. They're one and essentially the same, same family. Well, so what could that lead to? Well, certainly it could lead to intestinal ability-based issues or 
you may have you know drank the alcohol, taken a lot of Advil or ibuprofen or birth control, ate a lot of bit of uh, I should say of uh, inflammatory based foods, a lot of gluten, anything that can open up the gut wall. We've spoken about this in the past before. Well, that can absolutely open up the gut wall. It can allow, especially if you've taken a lot of antibiotics, a lot of bacteria or yeast to overgrow, and then it can actually move into the bloodstream. And as it's moving into the bloodstream, it's causing a much greater immune-based reaction. The problem is this is what's called a TH2 immune-based reaction. And I know that my IHP group, my integrative health practitioners, are going to be getting into that this week as we talk about the sympathetic nervous system and stress and how it balances the immune system. Well, we talk about TH2, the TH2 helper cells. And what they do is they're responsible for a chronic-based exposure. And they look like all the allergies and inflammation. Actually, I just gave it away. It's all inflammatory-based issues. It's like the aches and the pains and the joint pain and the headaches. It's all these chronic inflammatory issues. Well, they are typically from type some type of, well, again, stress, intestinal permeability, but it can also be mold. It can be anything that you're being exposed to or you've been exposed to and now it's in your system and hasn't been eliminated. So again, if it's always being built up in the gut through yeast and candida, and then it moves into your bloodstream, well, you can manufacture that on a daily basis, which is why you can see it's basically a vicious cycle. It's a loop. You know, you eat the foods, it allows for the proliferation of candida, and then candida moves into the bloodstream or yeast or its waste move in the bloodstream. Your liver has to detox all of that, and your blood has to be cleansed of all of these things as well, which takes immune cells. Those immune cells create inflammation. Not on purpose, but it's their job. It's their job to actually create that type of inflammatory response in order to clean your body of these pathogens. So again, your body's not messing up. It never messes up. But that's not the whole, that's not how the body works. It's there to keep you alive. The problem is it's dealing with an onslaught of mold or mycotoxins. And what are mycotoxins? I keep saying that. Well, mycotoxins are essentially the waste, the buildup from when mold begins to colonize and it feeds and it gives off all of this waste essentially. And those are called the mycotoxins. That's where they're formed from. So what I'd like to do right now since there's so many symptoms that can be associated with mold, is I'd like to give you a little bit of a quiz, and then I'm going to add this quiz to the show notes. So I'm going to make it really easy for you because I know sometimes I can talk a little fast. Some people say that. So what I want to do is I want to link it up for you. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 992. This is completely free. Those are just all the show notes are always listed there. So today's show is stephencabral.com forward slash 992. We are quickly approaching our 1000th episode. Really excited about that. I'll talk more about that next Thursday, which is our 1000th show. That'd be a really fun show. I do hope you tune in that day. Got some special things going on. So on episode today on 992, I'm going to list all of these different symptoms. And again, just kind of go over the list, see how many of these seem like they might be affecting you. And if you start to see a really um, a pattern forming where you're answering yes to a bunch of these, there's a really good possibility you're dealing with some type of candida overgrowth, some type of mold overgrowth in the body. And so I'm going to go over that right now. I'm going to give you the list. I want to make sure that you understand all the different symptoms, what they mean. I try to put them in real world vernacular so that you don't have to think about all these different terms like aspergillus and things like that, which honestly... I mean, we say these things, we make them up, we come up for terminology, but it's really only fun speak for you know doctors and other people out there who like to say big words. But in the everyday real world, how we work in our practice is we simply teach in real world terms. I mean, that makes the most sense, right? You're not going to be able to help people by not allowing them to understand not only in the terms that it should be spoken, but in what they need to do. So that's why hopefully in every single Cabral concept, I'm able to not only teach the subject, at least to the best of my ability, you know, I, I keep working, I keep trying to make sure I'm able to you know, speak it in a way that it's able to be understood, but then also that you can take action on. I simply don't believe in scaring people, meaning like a lot of people will teach you what all the different things are to watch out for, but they never tell you, hey, what can you do now to combat this? We don't need to scare people with all these different toxins in the environment, and there are a lot. But what we need to say is, hey, this is what to watch out for, but now here's what you can do about it, right? Because we need that. We need that for ourselves. We need it for our parents, if you're caring for a parent or your children, right? We need to do that. And then, of course, we need to share it with others. So let me go over the symptom list now. I'm going to go over the food list as well for cross-contamination. And then what I'd like to go over is maybe some long-term symptoms for what happens if you've been dealing with this for quite some time. 
and then I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up of what you can do. All right. So the first one I'd like to go through, this is a big one. It's, it's an energy drain on the body. So whenever anybody is dealing with mold-based issues or allergies, it just drains the body of energy. It leads to a lot of fatigue. And the reason is that your immune system is always on. Your immune system requires so much energy to keep going. And that inflammation has to be squelched as well for, by your body. So other big ones are headaches and light sensitivity. You know, I used to deal with this literally every single day and it'd be, it would be at its worst mid-afternoon. And I'm like, why do I have mid-afternoon headache every day? You know, so that was a really tough thing for me. Doctors could pinpoint what it was until eventually I started running some lab tests and found out, you know, after I did an organic acids test and I did a stool test of what was going on with my gut and then be able to clear all that up. Really, really important for me. Another one is brain fog. You know, so right now, so many people dealing with brain fog. Well, if you think about it, right, we've got the tension in the head, we've got the the body's weak, doesn't have enough energy, and the brain's weak. We get a lot of brain fog. So difficulty concentrating, a lot of kids with, you know, ADD, a lot of kids, you know, with, we say learning-based disabilities, but really what's the disability? The disability is their body's not in a space that's conducive to be able to sit still or to be able to learn or to be able to think because something's off in their body and kids are just much more susceptible. They have smaller bodies. Their organs are not as yet adequate in order to be dealing with the antibiotics that we feed them and the poor foods a lot of times that kids eat and also the liver just simply does not have the same power as it does when you're an adult to be able to filter all of that blood. So we've got to take care of our kids, make sure that they're, they're doing well as well. A lot of joint pain. A lot of joint pain and inflammation and swelling I see in my practice. A lot to do with, again, gut issues and mold toxicity. Skin numbness, tingling is a big one. Some of my others are shortness of breath. And then just chronic congestion. You know, people that are literally dealing with the stuffy nose, the watery eyes, the tearing eyes, the red eyes, the blurred vision, all of those different things I see all the time in my practice. And absolutely like, Again, post-nasal drip, huge sign, huge sign that there's candida overgrowth or that there's some type of mold, without a doubt. Other ones that I see are lightheadedness. Sometimes I see a metallic taste in the mouth that can be a candida overgrowth for sure. It could be a mineral imbalance. It could be a lot of different things, but this is a big one. Abdominal pain, bloating. I see that with mold toxicity as well. Goes back to candida, goes back to mold for sure. A lot of times urinary tract infections or bladder infections shortness of breath or just you know difficulty with the lungs because you can have mold spores in your lungs. And that's going to create inflammation because your immune system is targeting what? Now your lungs, making them swollen, making it difficult for you to breathe through all those bronchial-based tubes. So really important we look at that. A couple of other things you know, that you might want to just think about is like flu-like symptoms. If you're just kind of feeling weak all the time, really important that we look at potential mold overgrowth inside the body. One thing I ask most of the people in my practice, if they do have a lot of these symptoms, and I say, hey, do you feel worse in the late fall when the leaves have fallen and they've become moldy? Or do you feel worse in the spring when the snow is melted? So obviously you're in a warmer area, I mean, a cooler area, right? So snow is melted and then you have all the moldy stuff that was under like the moldy grass and moldy leaves that were left there all winter under the snow and they become damp. And I say, do you feel worse when at those times of the year? And if they say yes, well, that's a big one. And if they also answer yes, if they feel worse after going down in their basement or they feel worse on a rainy day or after a rainy day, then that's a really big sign that there's mold toxins. And I'll tell you why in just one moment. So those are all big things I look at, skin rashes and, and just anything to do with what could be an allergen. Because yes, it's, of course, it's sometimes food without a doubt. And we, that's why we test food sensitivity testing, but it can be other things as well. And mold is just overlooked. So again, if you've been having a difficult time getting well and you haven't looked for mold yet, that's why I'm doing this show specifically. It deserves its own show. It really does. So some long-term effects, this is really important because a lot of people do not equate the long-term effect of mold with the actual mold toxicity. And that's the big one. I talk about this all the time, but vision-based issues, sensitivity to light, headaches can be a real mold toxicity issue. Anxiety, again, the brain fog, confusion, difficulty thinking, even hair loss. All of those things can be attributed to mold toxicity. Same with muscle cramps, inflammation of muscle cramps. It's just a big one. If your body feels weak, if it's not getting the nutrients that it needs, if there's something going on with the gut, if there's inflammation, because your body's simply going after all of those mold spores developing or that were that are in your body, meaning like you're breathing them in. So those are some of the, the longer term ones, the memory loss, the confusion, that type of thing. But what I want to say is that we can get a lot of these 
issues, the way that we can get mold into our body. And, and again, a lot of people may not have talked about this, you know, to you because it, you know, they're looking at it from a weakened immune system. They're looking at it from allergies. They're looking at it from headaches, brain fog, asthma, again, or even so COPD. Now, again, we attribute that mainly to smoking, but if you get a real mold-based infection, like you're exposed to it, there could be a real issue there with CPOD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder for those of you who are wondering what COPD is. And again, you would be diagnosed with that. That would be a clinical diagnosis from your pulmonologist. So here's how we can be exposed though. And I think that this is important because you're saying, okay, well, maybe I have this, maybe I have some type of mold toxicity, but where would I get it from? Well, a big one is this. A lot of times the air you breathe contains mold spores and they're invisible, that you simply can't see them. They're, mic- they're on a microscopic level. They're very small. Now, could you see them maybe if you were really looking? Potentially, potentially, but they're on a microscopic level. So a lot of people, and I spoke about this in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, and I talked about toxic home syndrome or toxic work syndrome. And a lot of times in our ventilation, there's mold spores growing. So if you're at work and you've got that air blowing all the time, it could just be blowing mold because a lot of these things sit in the basement, right? So they're dragging up the mold from either outside or from the basement into the big compressors. And those compressors now are blowing it through the offices or even in your own home. That happens all the time. Like this is not just like, oh, it happens sometimes. No, this happens all the time. Really, even poorly ventilated workplaces in your home. If you never open your windows there's a really high chance you potentially have mold buildup in your house. You don't have enough air-based circulation. Again, especially if you live in a more humid climate, there's a really high chance, there's a really high likelihood if you have that humidity that there's mold buildup. Now, a lot of times we smell the mustiness, we smell the mold, but sometimes you don't. For example, we'll put it this way. A lot of people have had flooding before in their house. If you've ever had flooding and it's gone in your basement, there's most likely mold growing in that basement. Unless you did a full restore where you went in, you did mold remediation where they rip out all the sheetrock, they scrape all the rock, whatever might be there, and they get rid of all the mold. If you haven't had that done, there's most likely some mold. Now, what's the level? I don't know. I I couldn't tell you that, right? You can actually have it tested. You can have a mold remediation company come to your home, and a lot of times they test for free. And the reason they test for free is if they find mold, well, then they sell themselves on being able to remediate it. They'd be able to remove it. But you know, if you go with a good company, they are ethical. And if they don't find it, then you're good, right? That's really, really important. Well, we had some leaking upstairs from our neighbor because we're in a condo building in Boston. And we did see the, we saw the leaking and you know, we we're like, okay, the first time we just kind of painted back over it, no big deal. And then it leaked again like a year later. And we said, all right, we have to get this replaced. And again, but we didn't smell any mustiness. We didn't smell any mold. Well, our plumber and the person doing the sheetrock came in and they cut it away. They looked up at the common area pipes that were running between our neighbors upstairs and our place and they were leaking, but they were leaking slowly over time. So that's why a slow leak can do it. We had mold all along the top of the sheetrock and that mold was there the whole time. Now, how much was seeping through? Well, it's microscopic. It can seep through slowly over time. I couldn't smell anything. It wasn't musty, but it was there and it was growing. And this stuff is toxic. Black mold is completely toxic. It's poisonous. But even just, you know, the green mold spores that you see sometimes, those are toxic as well. So I want you to make sure if you're in a humid climate, you've had a flood, you don't live in a well ventilated home, or you don't live in a well, you don't work in a well ventilated office, let's say the New England area or somewhere in the north, and you have the fall leaves and they, they fall to the ground, they become moldy and you feel worse. Well, that's mold, right? And in the spring when everything melts and you get all that mold as well on the grass that was there under the snow and the leaves that were under the snow and they're moldy as well, do you feel worse? That's a real sign of mold toxicity. And I say this because all the symptoms that I've described, all the different issues that you may have, and again, I'm going to link them up because I know there was a lot today, but I'm going to link them up, stephencabral.com forward slash 992. What you can do is you can actually work with your doctor or you can work with your functional medicine practitioner and be like, you know what? I listen to a podcast and I have a lot of the symptoms of mold toxicity. I'd like to get a mold test or I'd like to start being treated for potential mold toxicity. Because if you're doing it in a natural way, there's no harm on working on it at all. What we do in our practice, and I always just like to share with you exactly what we do, we do an organic acids test to look for candida overgrowth and to look for oxalates and look for a lot of the byproducts of toxicity in the gut. So we're a huge fan of that urine-based test. But the other test that we run as well 
and we've been doing this for some time, is the mold toxicity test. Now, the nice thing is that this used to be a really complicated lab to run, but now you can run it instead of just with blood work, you can actually run it with a urine-based test. So it's pretty impressive as well. Not every functional medicine doctor deals with mold, so you just want to make sure that if you're working with a naturopathic doctor or if you're working with a functional medicine doctor or integrative health practitioner, that they're able to work with you using a urine-based test. Of course, you could do the blood work. That's not a problem as well. The reason why we like a lot of the urine-based testing is one, it's obviously easy to do it at home for your kids or yourself or you know parents, of course. But a lot of times when we do these urine-based tests, the reason why they're so great is they're not testing a lot of times for the mold itself or the candida itself. We're testing for the byproducts. And I've talked about this over and over, but it deserves repeating, is you're looking at metabolites. So for example, one of the metabolites that we look for with the urine-based test, and again, we don't own any of these tests. We just simply use the best of the best. We're looking at 40 different species of mold. So this is a pretty impressive lab test that we run. So, and we look at um, 40 different species and 11 different mycotoxins. Well, one of them, one of the mycotoxins is just called aflatoxin B1. And the reason we look at this, and we look at aflatoxin M1, but the reason we're looking at them is they're metabolites of mold. So now, because we know how difficult it is to find that, in candida as well, we're looking at the waste products of that. Metabolites is a nice way to say waste product. So we're actually looking for the waste that's poisoning your body. And it comes out in your urine because your body will filter this. The problem is it comes back on a daily basis if there's an overgrowth. So we test for a lot of these molds by looking at the end product metabolites, which makes it so much easier to find because you can't eliminate the waste, right? You can't hide that. The waste has to come out either through the stool or the urine. So we test in the urine because it's super easy to do. The same thing on the organic acids test with the candida. People say, well, why do you use that? Because candida is extremely hard to find on a stool test, almost impossible because it's hard to get it to survive to the lab. Then a lot of people doing DNA-based testing, it's unnecessary because you can just find the waste markers of yeast overgrowth and fungus-based overgrowth on an organic acids test. And that makes it very, very easy, honestly, because you're looking for things like citromatic acid and you're looking for tricarbolic acid and carboxy citric acid and arabinose and tartaric acid. So we're looking for all these different waste markers. And if we see that they're high, well, we know the thing that made it, right? The thing that made that waste would be high as well. So it's a really, it's, it's a nice art form of really doing functional medicine testing. It allows a non-invasive way, like just using a little bit of urine to be able to find mold to be able to find yeast and other types of overgrowth. So that's what we do in our practice. I'm certainly going to be teaching more of this as well. But what I wanted to do today was really give you those specific symptoms. And if you have those symptoms, honestly, you really, you owe it to yourself to to get rid of this mold overgrowth, if that's what it is, or yeast overgrowth in the gut. And the reason I say that, that you really do owe it to yourself is a lot of times where we're trying so hard to lose the weight or reduce the inflammation, the joint pain. We're using all the different supplements and it's not getting us the results we want, right? Well, there can be other deeper underlying things. So that's why I'm always saying go to the underlying cause because you know, you're know you dealing with, again, the joint pain, the inflammation, or you're even dealing with allergies or post-nasal drip and you're doing the, maybe you're doing oil pulling and you're doing nasal-based neti pots and all the different things, which are great. They're absolutely great and you're eliminating certain foods. like They're all absolutely fantastic. But the problem is that if we're not getting to that underlying root cause, which is the mold overgrowth, we're not going to be able to get rid of those symptoms in the long run. We're only going to be, even I would say, suppressing them with natural-based methods as well. So I'm just a big advocate of really getting to the bottom line, getting to what is causing this in the first place. If we can eliminate that, well, then we already work downstream to get rid of the inflammation, get rid of the allergies, to get rid of the tearing eyes and the skin rashes and the brain fog and all the other issues, the energy leaks that come along with it. So what I'm going to do today, obviously completely up to you, is I'm going to link up the urine-based mold toxicity test that we do. You can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 992. We're happy and excited to be able to debut that. We, you know, we, we keep bringing, try to keep bringing you new labs that we use all the time in our private practice so that you can use them. And, and really, you can use them anywhere in the world. We ship these labs all over the world. And on November 5th, we're going to be opening up to 15 more countries. So really excited. We can still ship them right now today to Australia and to the UK and to Canada and the US. And then on um, November 5th, it's going to be a big day. We're going to be able to ship those to 15 more countries so that you're going to be able to 
test yourself with the organic acid test or test yourself with that mold toxicity test. So today what I'm going to do is link that up, mold toxicity test right at stephencabral.com forward slash 992 to check out that lab test. And as always, if I can help, please do feel free. Let us know. Let me know how I can help. You can just go to cabralsupportgroup.com. That's where my health coaches are. That's where my team is. And we answer questions right there. What I'm going to do, because I know that I took up more time than I had even planned to a lot, is I'm going to do a follow-up show. So in a couple weeks, I'm going to actually give you all of the different foods that we avoid on our mold toxicity uh, detox protocols or our mold detox protocol. I'm going to give you the exact supplements we do. I'm going to give you the ear filters that we use. I'm going to give you everything. So like I, I mean, I always say this, but really my job is to teach you exactly what we do in our practice. A lot of doctors, a lot of practitioners wouldn't want to do that because they're worried that someone else would take all of their different you know, methodologies and their protocols. But I don't think that's what it's about. You know, If the true underlying goal is to help as many people as you can to get well, well, the more people that share that information, the less people out there using all the antibiotics, using all the you know, ADD medication and using all the different allergy medications. And if we all help each other, I'm telling you, it all comes around. It really does. We all benefit from that. So I'm excited to be able to do that. In a couple of weeks, I will lay out the entire mold detox protocol. As always, just stay tuned. Every day, we have a new Cabral concept. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And as always, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts in protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.